Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me for a video with my dad's new Aston Martin DB11. The last time we actually saw this car was at the collection day, which believe it or not, was already five months ago. Anyway, in the time since, I've not actually been out for a drive in this car yet. In fact, I'm not even sure I've seen it other than at the dealership. So today, let's take a look, take the car out for a drive on the roads, think about what it's like as a Grand Tourer, how does it compare to my Vantage GT8. So let's get started and check out the DB11. Alrighty then, the DB11, which quite literally, like I said, the last time we saw this car on the Shmi 150 channel was just under half a year ago. That time has flown by. Back then, my dad had a V12 Vantage. It was a car he had owned for about four years. The model, of course, where Aston Martin shoehorned the giant six litre naturally aspirated V12 into the baby model for their lineup. But he basically wanted to change it for something a little bit newer, more upgraded in terms of the technology, slightly more luxurious, and as a result, he went for a test drive in a DB11. We then went up to JCT 600 Aston Martin in Leeds to take a look at this car in Mariana Blue. At the time, he hadn't actually already bought the car, but when we were there, it looked great, the spec was magnificent, so a deposit went down, and very shortly thereafter, this car was delivered, and we said farewell to the V12 Vantage. Now, it's his only really special car, I would say, in the garage. The Jag XF Sport Brake alongside is actually now five years old. That's the daily, uh, daily grind car with its three liter diesel. Um, does the job pretty perfectly. This is for the days and it's already been used pretty well but let's come and have a quick look around the spec because honestly it's very very nice the color is quite reminiscent of my old Ferrari FF with the uh, dark navy blue the Mariana blue the dual tone painted uh, wheels the red brake calipers and then on the inside if I just grab the key from my pocket quite awkwardly right now you have the key here. I'm not a big fan of the key, it's huge. There's a nice weight to it, but it's a very, very awkward thing to hold. So we can just unlock that. And come have a look at the inside where you have the traditional Aston door handles, the swan doors that open outwards. But this is gorgeous inside here. The dual tone with the two different leathers, I think it's called Dark Knight, the navy blue leather you have for the center of the seats, the base, and around most of the center console. And then the light beige you have that contrasts against that. And also the chopped up carbon style. Again, not necessarily my favorite thing, but I do think it works quite nicely against the interior of this car. So you've obviously got a lot of updated electronics, significant step ahead from the previous gen from the V12 Vantage that he had before because of the partnership with Daimler to upgrade all of this, the digital displays, for example. And I noticed it's now got about four and a half thousand miles on it when I think it had, was it 2000 when he picked it up? So it's done some decent driving. I don't think it's been on an international road trip since my dad borrowed my 911 GT3 to take on a road trip at one point, leaving this at home, when this would potentially be the more appropriate Grand Tourer. But it's definitely a very, very nice place to be inside here, and it's super clean right now, it has to be said. Doing a good job of keeping it looking very, very tidy. So with the key in my pocket, oh, when you press the brake, that lights up. That's always quite fun. We can fire it into life. <laughs> It does sound good. Even adding the turbochargers, Aston Martin did manage to make it a proper V12. So we'll let the car warm up before we give it any noise and action. But we'll take the car out now for a drive to be reminded what it's like and how different this is, particularly with the gearbox, the eight-speed automatic, the general feel of it, compared to my Aston, my Vantage GT8. along then. So the car has one thing I do really like, which is the independent ability to adjust the suspension with the sporty characteristic, depending how you've got it set up. So this is GT mode, but if you press on the right hand side, you can go up to sport mode or even to sport plus mode. Then you've got three different settings from the adaptive dampers, which you can change independently of that. The gearbox though, like this, acts very nicely, or you can go into manual. And another thing that's cool with the DB11 is when you start driving, if you start driving with the paddles, it will stay in manual mode it won't automatically shift it won't revert you have to press the button here in the center to go automatically into drive but where we are now is a nice countryside road so we'll go to the middle damper setting sport mode keep it in manual it does sound so good doesn't it this v12 one of the best things what is better than driving a luxurious aston martin through the british countryside like we are now a lovely twisty countryside road 
perfect place really to enjoy a drive. It actually rides over the roads here really quite well. I'm following a learner so we won't go, won't go too close to them, give them some space. But you've got one side of the car where it will completely chill out, relax, take it easy, gentle, decent amount of storage space. I mean, even back behind me, you can use that rear seat area for luggage or squeezing some small people, some small passengers in the back if you've got some. Cruises along the steering wheel is slightly squared off. This thing Aston Martin started with the 177, um, but has obviously carried through to some of the more recent models. And I've not driven the new DBS yet. I know it's going to be a good car. I did drive the DB11 AMR, which has almost superseded this car. But something quite interesting, actually, and I know a lot of you will be thinking about this. When my dad bought his V12 Vantage, the market itself was actually at quite a low point. And since he bought it, the car kind of appreciated. So even though he did between five, six, seven thousand miles a year in the car, it didn't really lose any value. The DB11s took a thunderous hit, first owners, because they built quite a lot of them, to be honest, which meant that this car was a stunning deal in terms of what you get for the money absolutely amazing you can look up the adverts in your respective countries and see what they cost but even just cruising along here it's a lovely place to be what i want to do though is spin around so that we're not following the learner so that we can push on a little bit harder yes that's what i'm talking about the sounds the experience this is the perfect place to be driving a road like this just look at this road with the turns the twists some gentle undulations exactly where you want to be to hurtle along with a lovely Aston Martin V12 engine DB11. Great place to be. It's not a bad first drive, really, to be starting off with this car. You know, I'd love to spend more time with it. When I drove the DB11 for the first ever time, I went up to the Aston Martin factory in Gaydon in Warwickshire, where, of course, we filmed all the videos with my GTA being built. And I was really blown away by its capabilities. More than enough power, lots of torque. And in fact, the DBS, the new one, or the more powerful version of this, the flagship of the lineup, actually, almost, for the Grand Taurus, has so much torque, it's frankly ridiculous. So you don't really need to shift, especially with the 8-speed gearbox, anything like as much as I do. To be honest, I tend to over-shift, but I just enjoy the noises you get out of a car when you do it, especially when you have a V12 underneath you. And you can do a bit of this. It's a really, really good place to be. Things I find a little bit awkward though, central navigation screen. I do find this just awkwardly placed and unusual and I, I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of it. And then all of this is previous generation Daimler. It's not the newest equipment. We do have some nice features. The 360 camera system, for example, is on here, which works very, very well. As you'd expect to help parking, that kind of thing. And you've got a good visibility. The view over the, out the mirrors is great. The view over the front is good. It's got a very high and pronounced front end on the car. But I'm gonna go back down this road just because it's quite frankly so heavenly to drive. <laughs> One thing you do get in here is when you accelerate hard, you get a really early intervention of the traction control, which seems to be an Aston Martin thing, because I get that in my GT8 as well, which I guess can bring me on to comparing this car with the GT8, which are fundamentally two very, very different cars to drive. In fact, this is, of course, fun with sporty characteristics when you open it up like this, but it's much more positioned towards longer distance, daily driving, gentle, relaxed environments, whereas the GT8 is a car that makes very little sense at all, as I frequently say on my videos. It's a bit expensive, and it doesn't, as a car, add up right, because it's a bit too heavy to be an out-and-out -out sports car, yet it's the noisiest and most ridiculous thing in the world to drive. It has heavy steering, heavy clutch, manual gearbox, of course, which is a big part of that, whereas this is an auto automatic paddle shift car, lighter steering, dynamic steering, it changes between the different modes. Totally, totally different driving experience. I have to say, each are fantastic in their respective ways. Very, very different approaches to a similar topic. I think to the casual observer, you know, an Aston Martin is an Aston Martin, but even within the range, you can have such different driving experiences. And it's hard to believe that the same company is the one behind the Valkyrie as well, which is just a total thing from another planet. Anyway, here, driving like this, enjoying this car. Can't really complain, can I? Here then, an empty run up the hill, up towards the red line, about 7,000 RPM. You get such a kick, actually, in the back when you upshift at the red line. But it does sound good. It does sound very, very good. Totally different noise, less antisocial than my GT8. That's quite a big factor in this, massively less. But yeah, just a nice car to drive. It's really, I think, my fault that I've kind of pushed my dad into buying Aston Martins. Of course, I used to have my V8 Vantage Roadster way back. I bought 
that car in 2010 and occasionally he drove it and then um, I guess it's the car that we default to because they're so so nice in so many ways and the image and what they stand for and what they are and I pushed him into getting the B12 Vantage which of course did pretty well from the residuals point of view and um, yeah I think that triggered the DB11 to come afterwards so I'm sure many of you are thinking the other way around it's kind of my fault that my dad got into buying a nice car not the other way which I know is unusual and normally it would be totally the opposite in this case though let's continue cruising back not a bad first drive but now we're actually gonna go and have a family lunch okay then here we are time to tuck back in through the garage doors the parking sensors are very overzealous they come on all the time but check this out here if you press this I think yep you've got 360 camera that makes life very easy. You've also got a front-facing camera, which is helpful. And up front, <laughs> my dad's got that sign. I think my mum bought that. Aston Martin parking only. Lesser cars will be clamped. So you can even see it here. Just get this forward. There we go, let's come to a stop. The tire, by the way, is to uh, prevent any risk of damage to the front bonnet of a car. Back from the days when cars didn't have parking sensors that made all of this easy. Anyway, now that we're here in the garage, in Sport Plus. <laughs> always knew how to make a good sounding engine. So you have your park reverse neutral drive controls up here, usual things for the infotainment, but it is all the kind of previous generation, you know, all of this is a bit older Mercedes. It's what my AMG GTR has, it's exactly the same, but if you buy a newer Mercedes, you have newer tech. One fun thing, this armrest, you've got the control here to open and close the armrest, if you want storage stuff in there. But outside of that, it's a pretty good package. Fun to drive it, thanks to my dad. Congrats to my dad on buying the DB11 in the first place. For now, let's hop on out. Okay then, let me wrap it up. Fun little drive today in the DB11. Maybe we'll see more of the car again in the future, but for the time being, I need to press the button, which is just inside the door here. Let's pull down the shutters and we can say goodbye to it. We'll close up the one on the uh, Jag side as well. But very nice car, very nice color. Can't really go wrong, can you? The DB11. I did have a drive in the DB11 AMR with Aston Martin in Germany too, including a very, very fast VMAX run down the Autobahn, so that was awfully exciting. And hopefully, hopefully, at some point, fingers crossed, I'll get to try out the new DBS Superleggera to see what that is like as well. And potentially, that could be a car that interests me down the line. Who knows? Never know in this space, do we? So keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, that is it for now. Thank you very much, as always, for watching, guys. I appreciate your support. A quick drive today, but a first drive for me in my dad's Aston Martin at DB11. I will see you, though, again very soon. Cheers. Hi, dog. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Bye.